All right, what's going on, people? So today I'm going to discuss for loops. A for loop will repeat some code a limited amount of times. With a while loop, a while loop can repeat some code infinitely. With the for loop, we can do something a certain or limited amount of times. Here's an example. Let's say we would like to display the word hello three times. With the for loop, we can write something like this. Now to create a for loop, type for parentheses curly braces. Within the set of parentheses, we have up to three statements. The first is that we can create a temporary counter, much like we're assigning a variable. Let's create a counter named i. Let i. i is a common naming convention for counters within a loop, i meaning index. So let i equal, what number would we like to start at? Let's start at zero, then semicolon. This is the first statement. We'll create a counter to keep track of the number of iterations. The next statement is the condition in which we continue the for loop. We will continue this for loop as long as i is less than or equal to 2. That's if we're going to execute this for loop three times. 0, 1, 2. That would be a total of 3. Then the third statement, we can increment or decrement our counter i. So let's increment our counter by one during each iteration by typing i++. plus plus. And that's a for loop. i is set to 0. We'll continue as long as i is less than or equal to 2. Then during each iteration, we will increment i by 1. That means we will execute this for loop three times. What are we going to do when we execute each iteration? Let's console.log hello. So this should display the word hello three times. Yep, hello three. Now if I were to instead console.log i, we can see what i is. So during the first iteration, i, our counter, is 0, then 1, then 2. If I wanted to count up to 10, I could change my condition to be this. i is less than 10. So we begin at 0, then we count up to 9. So if I need 1 through 10, I'll set i in the beginning to be 1, then continue as long as i is less than or equal to 10. There, so we have numbers 1 through 10 using a for loop. We can even increment by a different number. Instead of incrementing our counter by 1, let's increment by 2. So i plus equals 2. So then we should count up by 2s. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. If I want to start at 2, I can change our counter to start at 2. Count from 2 to 10, but increment by 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If we would like to count down, let's start at 10, then count down to 0. Let i equal 10 will continue as long as i is greater than 0, then i minus minus to decrement. Hey, for fun, after we escape the for loop, let's console.log happy new year. It's as if we're counting down to midnight on New Year's Eve. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy new year. Or we could count down by 2. I minus equals 2, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, or 3, or whatever number, 10, 7, 4, 1, Happy New Year, or whatever number you want. Now I'm going to cover continue and break. This time we will count to 20. We need a for loop. We'll create a counter, let i equal, I'll set i to be 1. That's our first statement. Our condition is we'll continue as long as i is less than or equal to 20, then increment i by 1 during each iteration. So to test this, let's console.log i. So we have the numbers 1 through 20. So with continue, we can skip an iteration. I'm going to write an if statement. If i is equal to now there is a superstition that 13 is an unlucky number let's say if i is equal to 13 we will skip that iteration i know it, it's a weird example so if i is equal to 13 let's continue continue will skip this iteration of the loop else we will console.log whatever i is so now when i run this program when i run this program we skip over 13 we jump from 12 to 14. So if you ever need to skip an iteration, you can use the continue keyword. 
Now there's break. Break will break out of the loop entirely. We've seen this keyword in switches to break out of the switch. If i equals 13, then just exit the for loop entirely. So in this example, we count up to 12, but since i now equals 13, we break out of the loop entirely. We don't continue the rest of the iterations. Alright everybody, so those are for loops. You can repeat some code a limited amount of times. There's up to three statements we can write. We can create a temporary variable that serves as a counter, a condition in which we should continue, then we can increment or decrement our counter. And those are for loops in JavaScript.